Hey guys, Devin here with Admiral Off-Road, and today we're going to be talking about junkyard mods. So the first junkyard mod we'll talk about is going to be uh, suspension. We'll start off with uh, coil springs first. Uh, option number one, you can get them out of a Jeep ZJ. You're going to want the V8 and the upcountry uh, trim level, and that's going to give you between an inch and an inch and a half of lift. If you want a little bit more, you can go with a uh, Ford F-151. That's going to give you between three and four inches. Now, uh, a word of caution with the F-150, the F-150 is uh, heavier than your Jeep Cherokee is. So these uh, springs are going to be pretty stiff. Um, not one I would recommend, but it'll fit and it'll give you between three and four inches. Uh, the one that I did when I first got my Jeep was uh, I did the Thunderbird one. So this is get coils out of a 1983 to 1997 Ford Thunderbird, and it'll give you between three and four inches of lift. Now there's a few different um, models that were in here, so I'd recommend going with the uh, V6 LX model. That has the softest coils. It'll still get you that, uh, I got three and a half inches with mine, and uh, it was a nice soft ride still. Uh, next one is you can get a used Jeep TJ lift. So these are all stock coils. This one, if somebody's just selling a used lift really, really cheap from a Jeep TJ, you can go and grab that. It's gonna give you one inch less lift than it gave the TJ. So let's say somebody's advertising a five inch lift for a Jeep TJ, that's gonna give your XJ four inches of lift, but you're only gonna need uh, the front foils from that. Uh, going on uh, to leaf springs now, this one's nice and easy. Any two and a half inch wide leaf springs you can cut to fit underneath your Cherokee. Um, here's a couple examples, S10, Blazer, and Dakota. I have S10 uh, leafs underneath mine, and that works really, really well. Uh, the reason why I listed these three specific vehicles is they're nice and light. Just like what I mentioned with the coil springs, if you have a really heavy vehicle, you're gonna have really stiff springs. Same with the leaf springs. If you have a really heavy truck that you're getting them out of, they're gonna be really, really stiff, and it's not gonna allow your Jeep to ride nice. So these are nice light vehicles. So they're gonna have uh, leaf springs that'll fit or feel really, really good in the back of your chip, uh, Jeep. Next one is shackles. You can get them out of a Jeep MJ, which is the Comanche, and that'll give you about half inch of lift. Or you can get them out of a GM full-size pickup between 1995 and 1999, and that's gonna give you an inch and a half. Uh, when you lift your vehicle, you're gonna need longer shocks. So if you're between two and four inches, you can go and pick up a set of uh, Jeep JK Rubicon shocks. So if you find them in a junkyard or somebody selling them really, really cheap after lifting their JK, I know Craigslist, these come up all the time really cheap. Uh, that's a good option. Next thing we're gonna talk about is brakes. Um, First thing, Jeep WJ, so Grand Cherokee, rotors and calipers, this is going to give you more stopping power. When you get bigger uh, tires or your Jeep gets heavier as you add more and more things to it, you're going to need more stopping power. Uh, these WJ rotors and calipers are going to give you that extra stopping power. And the other good thing about them is they still fit in your stock 15 inch wheels. So sometimes when you get bigger uh, brakes and stuff, you're going to need bigger wheels to fit them. But these ones are going to fit on your stock 15 inch wheels. When you lift your vehicle, you're going to need longer brake lines. Um, Jeep YJ, so some of the older Wrangler brake lines, are going to be three to four inches longer. So um, if you got about a three or four inch lift, slap a pair of these on and you're good to go. Uh, Dodge Dakota rear lines, so uh, for your rear brake lines from 1987 to 1996, Dakotas are going to be six inches longer, so if you got a little bit higher lift. And to go along with that, for the fronts, if you get uh, GM, uh, C or K 1500 front brake lines, those are also going to be six inches longer. So depending on how much lift you got, you need those longer brake lines. You don't have to go get uh, brand, uh, brand new aftermarket ones. You can either get new ones for these models. Stock brake lines are going to be a lot cheaper than uh, you know, aftermarket brake lines. And, uh, or you can just go to a junkyard if you find some in good shape. Moving on now to axles. Uh, before we get started, yes, I know you can swap tons of different axles into the Cherokee. I picked these three because they came stock in the Jeep Cherokees, and that means uh, the only thing you have to do to swap these axles is take the old one out and put this one in. There's nothing else that needs to be done. So these are gonna be your easiest ones. Uh, starting off, these first two are gonna be uh, rear axles, and this one is front axle. So, um, First one is a Chrysler eight and a quarter from a 1997 and up Cherokee. So there's two different Chrysler eight and a quarters that came in the Cherokees. Uh, the ones that were before 1997 were 27 spline, and the ones that came after 1997 were 29 spline. So you want to get the 29 spline eight and a quarter. This is going to be uh, one of the strongest rear axles that came stock. Um, the only one stronger than that was 
the Dana 44. Uh, these ones are a little bit harder to find. The eight and a quarters are relatively easy to find on Craigslist or junkyards. These Dana 44s, depending on where you are, can be kind of hard to find. But if you can find them, they're gonna be out of a 1987 to a 1989 Cherokee with the tow package. So you're gonna be looking at some of the older Cherokees, they have the tow package, look underneath, you might have that Dana 44. That's the strongest rear axle that came stock in the Cherokees. Um, for the front axle, all Cherokees come with the Dana 30. Um, the difference is there's uh, different models throughout the years that all kind of had their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the strongest one came between 1995 and 1999. Uh, there's a couple reasons for this. It's a non-vacuum disconnect, so you don't have to worry about any of the vacuum things with your front axle. Um, also, it has the biggest U-joints, the strongest U-joints, and it's a high pinion. Um, some of the later ones, so like the 2000, 2001 are low pinion Dana 30s. This one's a high pinion, so you definitely wanna get the high pinion if you can. It's got a stronger carrier, the way the teeth are ground are better, um, and it's got uh, those stronger U-joints as well. So this is the strongest front axle you can get. This is the strongest rear axle you can get, stock with the Cherokees. And this one's a pretty good option as well. So if you're looking at stock, easy to swap axles, these are the three you're gonna be looking for. All uh, right, we're going to finish up with our miscellaneous category, so this is just everything that uh, really didn't fit in anywhere else. Um, first one is our ZJ and WJ transmission cooler. Uh, some Cherokees came with transmission coolers, some didn't. If you have one and you want a quick, easy upgrade, go with the ZJ or WJ transmission coolers. They just uh, help keep everything a little bit cooler. Um, next one, if you have an older Cherokee or a 96 or older, you can swap to a 97 and newer. Uh, uh, side mirrors and they allow you to fold them in so if you're on a tight trail or something like that uh, if you swap to the 97 and newer now you can fold your mirrors in. Uh, next one is the overhead console. These are found mostly on 2000 to 2001 Cherokees uh, kind of with the higher packages so they wouldn't be found on a sport model they'd be found on uh, like a country or one of the nicer uh, packages. Uh, wheels any uh, five on four and a half inch wheel is going to fit on your Cherokee um, Wranglers have some of these as well as Ford Rangers. Uh, if you're getting Jeep ones, be careful though, not all are five on four and a halfs. Uh, so make sure you either measure or uh, double check on that. So, But if you'd like just some of the different uh, styles, uh, Jeep made a bunch of different wheels, uh, you can do that. Next one, fuel injectors. Stock Cherokee fuel injectors have one hole. These ones have four. They don't flow anymore, so they're not any uh, higher pound injectors. But uh, the four holes, some people say it atomizes the fuel better, it gives you better fuel economy. Um, so this is a pretty good swap for that. If you have a 98 or older Cherokee, you're gonna wanna go with uh, the one that ends in 703. I'll put the exact part numbers down below, um, but if you have the older ones, it's a 703. It's from, you can find these in 1995 to 1997. Uh, Neons, Caravans, Grand Caravans, Stratus, Breeze, Voyager, Grand Voyager, Cirrus, and Seberings. Those are all uh, Dodge uh, Chrysler vehicles uh, with a 2.0 or a 2.4 liter. If you have a 99 to 01 Cherokee, you're gonna look for the 784 part number. Again, I'll put the exact part numbers in the description. Uh, they're found on the same vehicles from 98 to 2000-ish. If you get one out of a 2000, just make sure you double check that part number because uh, I think they started phasing those out around 2000. Uh, last three here are all steering upgrades. Um, our uh, ZJ tie rod and Pitman arm. Our stock Cherokee uh, tie rod is really, really thin and it's hollow. ZJ one is a uh, solid piece, so it's not going to bend as easily. And the Pitman arm provides a one inch Pitman arm drop. So if you lift your Jeep and you want a little bit of a Pitman arm drop, uh, just go and grab a ZJ one. Uh, WJ knuckle, tie rod, and drag link. This is a little bit more involved than just swapping out your tie rod like the ZJ1, but it gives you a really, really strong steering system, and it takes you from having an inverted Y system, which is what the stock Cherokee has, to being a crossover steering. So if you like that crossover steering setup, go ahead and grab all the uh, WJ knuckle, tie rod, and drag link. Uh, last one is the Dodge Durango steering box. If you get big tires on your Cherokee, uh, there's a point where our steering box just doesn't cut it anymore. This is a direct swap. You're going to want to get it out of a 1999 uh, Dodge Durango non-snow plow. So I guess some of them are specifically snow plows, uh, and it's just going to be a lot stronger of a steering box. All right, well, that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, or if you have a mod that I missed, please put it down below. 
Um, if you like what you saw here, please like and subscribe. Uh, a quick note to my subscribers. Uh, thank you very, very much for subscribing. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've actually done a video with my Jeep. I have a Jeep channel. Where is my Jeep? Um, I'm studying abroad right now. I have to leave my Jeep back home, but don't worry when I get back home I have big plans for the Jeep. I just before I left put on rock sliders and uh, frame stiffeners So I'll be sure to do a video on that uh, I'm still to come. We're gonna be long arms uh, Armor all kinds of stuff. So if that's what you want to see Please uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and let me know if you have something specific that you want to see done to the Jeep Let me know and I'll uh, try and do a video on it. Thanks